Everyone, good afternoon. This is Tom Martin from the Best Practices for Chemicals Conference and the organizer of today's webcast. Uh, joined here with Keith Sturgill, VP and CIO of Eastman Chemical and Vice Chairperson of the ASEC Board of Directors. I'm also joined with Ray Adams, Field Services Director of the Chemicals IBU at SAP, who will be moderating today's webcast. Very excited to have everyone here on the line right now. Uh, just doing a quick time check, we do have a, about two more minutes before we go ahead and get kicked off, uh, but wanted everyone to, to know that, uh, that we are online and uh, we'll be getting underway here in just a moment. Thanks for joining. For those of you just joining the webinar right now, I know we've had a little dead air on the line, so I just want to jump in and say welcome to today's webcast, Seize an Opportunity in Today's Digitizing Chemical Industry. Uh, we're going to be going ahead and getting underway in just about one more minute. Please, please hang tight, just about one more minute. Okay, everyone, welcome here today for today's Seize an Opportunity in today's Digitizing Chemical Industry webcast. This is part of a webcast series in reference to the Best Practices for Chemicals Annual Conference. My name is Tom Martin, conference organizer and webcast organizer today, uh, joined here with Keith Sturgill, the VP and CIO of Eastman Chemical and the Vice Chairperson of the ASUG Board of Directors. I'm also joined today by webcast moderator Ray Adams, field director of the Chemicals IBU at SAP. Uh, it's currently about 1 o'clock now, so we're going to go ahead and get underway. Uh, we've got a lot of great content here today. Uh, today's webcast, about 30 minutes in length. We're thrilled that everyone has taken some time to, to join us here today. Uh, Keith has uh, uh, honored us with a little bit of his time here today to, to really deep dive into some of the most challenging obstacles facing the chemical industry today, as well as some of the greatest opportunities facing the chemical industry in 2016. Again, my name is Tom Martin, representing the Best Practices for Chemicals Conference that Keith Sturgill will be a VIP keynote speaker at here next month in March, March 14th through 16th at the Woodlands Waterway in Marriott, Texas. In the Woodlands, Texas, just outside of Houston, uh, it's an absolutely phenomenal conference this year. We've got over 40 best practices presentations being delivered by the peer leaders and practitioners that have developed and implemented these business value driving solutions. We've got a whole wealth of keynotes. It's the industry's best location to go to to network not only with peers, peer leaders, peer practitioners within the industry, but also those solution and service providers, thought leaders and experts from within the industry really to discuss and learn best practices. Uh, for all of those that are on the line that are interested in learning more about the conference, you should see the conference URL on your screen right now. It's www.bestpracticeconferences.com slash or stroke chemicals. Or please feel free to call our team here at the Eventful Group, the organizers and producers of the event at 914-509-5354. And uh, with that, we'll go ahead and get underway uh, for today's webcast. So I'd like to hand it over to our webcast moderator, Ray Adams, Field Director, Chemicals IBU, SAP. Ray, over to you. Excellent. Thank you, Tom. So good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today. As Tom mentioned, my name is Ray Adams, and I'm actually a founding member of the Chemical SAP Users Group. So SISUG has been in existence for over 10 years now. As some of you may recall, I used to host the fall SISUG conference here in Newtown Square. Now, last year, we actually transitioned the conference to the eventful group, <clears throat> and this really expanded it to an international audience under the umbrella of the best practices for chemicals. 
Uh, so again, joining me today is Keith Sturgill. Keith is the Vice President and CIO of Eastman Chemicals. We've been working with Eastman for many years now. Uh, in addition, he is the Vice Chairperson of the ASUG Board of Directors. Uh, Keith is actually also a member of the CIO Roundtable at the ChemITC under the American Chemistry Council. Uh, the ChemITC is actually where SISUG was initially founded. Uh, so thank you uh, for joining us today, Keith, and welcome. So, so maybe we could just start with your role at ASUG. You know, what what are some of the, your key responsibilities and some of the key challenges you actually see at at the at a, at the ASUG level? Yeah. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm uh, I'm happy to uh, to be here to. Uh, to talk about some really important things, I think. Um, and let me uh, let me just apologize right, right up front. Uh, I am a little bit under the weather, so if uh, if I sound a little funnier than usual, we'll blame it on uh, on my head cold. So, um, yeah, ASUG, I've uh, I've been part of ASUG for several years now. I'm currently in the uh, the vice chair role. Uh, we'll be moving into the chairman's role uh, at annual conference coming up in May, but. Um, one of the things that we are really wanting to, to drive within ASUG is helping our uh, member companies take the next step to leverage SAP technologies to fundamentally improve how their businesses operate, you know, the, the, their ability to make decisions, their, their ability to uh, respond to a, a very uh, dynamic world. Um, I don't think there's anyone that I've talked to in recent years that thinks the pace of change is going to be less in the future than it is today. So I think the ability of our organizations to sense and respond and react to uh, things that we frankly didn't anticipate are going to be differentiators in the future. And uh, we're trying to help uh, be an advocate for our member companies with SAP and help help all of us better leverage SAP technologies for world-class business. Yeah, that, that's great. You know, I, I see ASUG playing such a critical role, uh, certainly not only a, across the industries, but also across all of the, you know, line of business and solution areas. So, so Keith, let's first talk a little bit about uh, big data. You know, the, the, the term big data is, is obviously a very ambiguous term. And we often associate it with the other industries. It, it seems to be a little more prevalent in retail and consumer products, you know, banking and financials, where they tend to be driving massive amounts of data. Uh, but we seem to be seeing all industries, even chemicals, you know, truly generating a, a, a massive amounts of data now. So what do you see is, you know, what's driving some of this change? And what do you see as some of the key areas of big data with, within chemicals? Yeah, so uh, that, that, this is a great topic. And uh, you're right, there's a, there's a tremendous amount of hype out there around the word big data. And uh, the reality is we, we've, we've always had access to, I'll say lots, over the past decade, we've had access to tremendous amounts of information. But it's, it, is, it is growing exponentially, not just. Uh, within our industry, but within most industries. But if I take a step back and I just think about this idea. I think it's it's really it's really hard to overhype this. I think the change that we are about to see in in the coming few years is really difficult to ma imagine. I think it's going to change how the world operates and certainly how businesses operate. And in the end, it is about decision making. You know, improving the ability for organizations to make decisions, even at tactical levels, all the way up to the strategic levels. Think about the, the CSR um, talking with the customer and being able to make a decision to better serve that customer, all the way to, you know, the boardroom decisions on that next uh, acquisition target, being able to to move faster than our competitors. And uh, so it's, it, it, it is about decisions, um, you know, Computers have been around for a long time. You know, I, I began uh, my career uh, almost 30 years ago, and I've seen Moore's Law in effect for for that 30 years. But I think, you know, the, the, we're about to get to a point where we're starting to see things change exponentially. Um, you, know, it, it, you know, in the past, it was really more about leveraging computers. You'd code computers with with instructions and rules, and you would 
process the data through the rules and it would come out with an answer to, uh, frankly, very trivial problems. Uh, and that certainly aided with automation and efficiency, which is absolutely critical. You know, productivity will always be with us. Um, being more productive in the the, um, the routine things. But, but I'm really sensing that we're going to see things change rapidly in the near future so that machines are starting to recognize patterns. You feed them the data, they recognize patterns, and they learn, and they get better. And I think that's going to fundamentally change how decisions get made in companies. So if I were to say, I'm not one of these guys that believe that computers are taking over the world, the science fiction image that maybe a lot of people see, or, or, or some of the... Um, some of the articles I've read recently really don't talk about the human impact, but the reality is uh, I believe human insight will become ever more critical uh, as we go into this next generation of business. Because I believe if you're a person enhanced with big data, computing with analytical techniques, it will free them to do the things that people do better, you know, to design new things, to establish social networks to uh, to connect the dots across many different contexts. So I see this idea of big data enhancing the judgment of the people within our companies. People will become even more important than they are now, but the jobs that they do will be very different than they are now. Yeah, th thanks, Keith. You know, I, I often use the term sort of insight to action, and, and, and I think that's really what you're talking about. So, th you know, sort of to follow up to that, you, you talk about decision making. Do, do you also see decision making being pushed further down into the organization? Yeah, without without a doubt, you know, if you think about, you know, and if you think about the supply chains of the future, and I know we're we're, we're going to talk about that a little bit later, but if you think about that frontline CSR, um, I think the ability for that customer service rep to be able to answer an inquiry or a problem for a customer instantaneously will be differentiating. You know, I I, I firmly believe that the uh, consumer grade expectations are coming to B2B companies. And I'll speak for Eastman at least, I'm not sure we're prepared for that expectation. So if you think about the uh, the expectation that you have when you when you interact with uh you know with Amazon, for example, you know, you expect pretty much instantaneous answers. Um, if you get an answer that says I'll come back to you tomorrow with an answer, you simply go somewhere else. And I think we've got to prepare ourselves and our systems and our people to respond to that kind of expectation. So yeah, pushing yeah, the decision I, making down in the organization is absolutely uh, a prerequisite. Yeah, and, and I think the example of the CSR is a, is a great example. You know, they are the first line of defense, and they they truly represent that first voice to the customer. So I, you know, I, I think, you know, many obviously all the roles will be impacted, uh, but I think that's a, that's a great example. So. Let, let's move on to the next one. So, you know, certainly, uh, you know, what I've seen, not just in the past five years, but heck, even in the past two to three years, is just been a tremendous amount uh, within the industry of, you know, mergers, acquisitions, and divestitures. And it's impacted by, you know, a, a lot of different, um, a lot of different situations. But, you know, even in your case, you've got Eastman and Solutia uh, just at, at the end of this uh, you know, last month, ChemChina announcing uh, the acquisition of Syngenta, you know, uh, the massive merger between Dow and DuPont. And and then you've got, you know, DuPont spinning off Comores and Air Products spinning off their materials division now called Versum and, and Dow, of course, with many examples of America Styrenix and Trinzio. Um, so it, the level of activity certainly has not slowed down. So how do you see technology helping with all of this activity and and what's been some of the impacts you know to, to you at at Eastman yeah so 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 technology is absolutely critical if you uh, if if you look at Eastman who has grown in the recent years through through acquisition uh, of several larger strategic acquisitions we've maintained for many years the belief in the idea of the integrated enterprise um, and we leverage SAP technologies to deliver that integrated enterprise. It gives us visibility globally, 
to how our business is performing. You know, what 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 is what is the trend in order volumes? What do our uh, global inventories look like? And we get we're able to deliver one version of the truth through that integrated enterprise. Now it's really easy to say that it is very heavy lifting to maintain that, especially when you're growing through acquisition. Um, as you integrate uh, a company like Solutia, or re more recently like Tominko, it's, uh, it, it's not just a merger of systems, it's a merger of cultures. And what we found is that as we spend, as we do the heavy lifting of integrating an acquisition into our core business process platform, we find that that aids us in integrating the cultures as well. So uh, I can't say that it, it's all roses, but we believe we get uh, differentiating value from maintaining that integrated enterprise. Yeah, <clears throat> excellent. So, so let's talk about some of the other global challenges that we're seeing. Uh, you know, certainly unprecedented low oil prices. I, I don't think any of us would would have anticipated. You know the current levels being around thirty dollars a barrel, and and then of course the impacts of of shale gas, and and then we still see this strong demand shifting east. What you you know what have been what do you see as some of these impacts to global supply chains, and how how has that impacted Eastman? Yeah, for, for, for sure. I mean the um, no one that I know of predicted thirty dollar thirty dollar oil, um, and. Frankly, it's a it's a pretty significant challenge for us. Um, you know, as we continue to uh, to try to offset some of the the headwinds around um, you know currency exchange or low oil, uh, you know, productivity and efficiency are are the name of the game for us right now. Uh, trying to weather significant headwinds. Uh, for those of you not very familiar with Eastman, Eastman is a large exporter, so uh, a, a strong dollar is not necessarily uh, our friend, uh, but we we're we're doing the things necessary to reduce our cost structure to maintain what we believe is an outperforming financial picture, even when we have less than optimal conditions. Um, you know, and we, and we do that through uh, reliable supply chain. One of the things that differentiates Eastman is we are viewed as a very reliable supplier. If uh, if if lots of things happen around the world. Eastman can be counted on to serve its customers and put their cu put their customers at the forefront and do what's necessary to make sure we maintain um, supply of our product to them. So we want to maintain that um, differentiator, if not enhance that differentiator. Yeah, that's that's great. And 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 yeah, these you know these challenges to the supply chain certainly you know same way they're they're not going to slow down. Uh, they're they're going to they're going to keep coming at us. So, so let's shift well, you know, topics so let a little add, bit. Yeah, let, me, let me just add a little bit to that before we move on, yeah. Ray. Uh, you know, if you look at, you know, I think the days are gone where we can put an annual plan in place and then just simply execute on that plan. I think we've got to design agility into how our businesses operate. And uh, for us, especially if you look in the procurement space and, and the, uh, the availability of cloud services, you know, we, we believe that can allow us to be more agile as a company, you know, so that we can sense and respond to things that we didn't anticipate. Whereas, you know, in the past, when we were running everything internally, uh, we weren't quite as agile as I think we will be in the future. Yeah, I, 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 think, that's, I think that's spot on. And, you know, we've we here at SAP use this term, you know, one sense and respond, but also just to the concept of responsive networks. And and you're right, you can't just set a plan and then forget about it anymore. It's a living, breathing plan that's constantly changing now. So, so let's uh, talk a little bit about what we're seeing in the workforce in general, and 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 the you know, what we sort of call the skilled labor crisis. I, you know, I go back to, I, I think about the first time that I actually started working uh, X number of years ago at Roman Haas Company. My first day on the job, I went out to lunch with a group of individuals. Everyone at the table had 30 plus years of experience. And, and here I was this new kid on the block. Um, we're seeing just this, you know, massive amount of, of, uh, education 
and and knowledge leaving the workforce now you know a true livelihood of, of the company so how do you see technology helping to address that and to optimize the workforce and to try to combat some of these you know challenges yeah, so so before i get into the technology piece uh there without a doubt the war for talent is here you know uh, if, if you look at uh, Eastman, uh, my organization very specifically, there is a demographic tsunami coming. Uh, we know it. Uh, we are trying now to prepare for that. But the reality is we're going to be successful as a company. It comes down to the people that we're able to hire, retain, train, develop, and engage to, um, to move our businesses forward. So I, I, the, the longer I do this, um, the more convinced I am that I think it's a company, Southwest Airlines has it right, your number one stakeholder are your employees. If you take care of your employees, give them what they need to be successful to bring their best to work every day, they will take care of everything else, including the paying customer. So uh, hiring the right talent is, is, is job one uh, for me and for Eastman. And uh, we, we try to, to leverage technology. You know, example, we're, we're, we're using success factors to help us put in a platform that helps us grow and develop people, hopefully more effectively than our competition. So uh, I think tools play a role. Uh, you can't do it without the tools. You also have to think about how is the next generation that's coming into the workforce, how do they work differently than the generation that I came in? And, you know, if you think about things like bring your own device or, uh, you know, more dependent or more fluent in leveraging mobile platforms and cloud platforms. We, we've got to uh, we've got to take into account the way they want to work as opposed to the enterprise telling them how they need to work. We need to provide flexibility in use of technology so that they can be as productive as they can be. Now, you can't talk about people or human capital in my mind unless you talk about culture and Eastman, we're working, we're working very hard to create a culture where people can give their best every day, that we're highly collaborative and we're highly ethical. Um, and very recently, I'm pretty proud to say that we've been recognized by Glassdoor Magazine uh, or Glassdoor as one of the best places to work in North America. I think in 2014, we were actually number four on that list. This year, we're number 11 on that list because you know, we really believe culture matters. It's a differentiator for us. Yeah, and, and, and you know, the employees are obviously just the the, the lifeblood of, of the company. And you know, as I look at it, I you know, this co the concept of retention is, is to me such a big factor. You know, and 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 something that you know we we see in, in many industries, certainly not just chemicals, but it, as, as one of the key things that, that are changing. And you're right, it gets down to culture. It gets down to how do you value employees? How do you make sure that they're part of the company culture? So, I, I, you know, again, I think that's going to be a, a is an critical. Absolutely. Okay, so let's uh, let's jump to our next topic, and and again, it's it's another big word. It's this concept of uh, cybersecurity. Um, we see it in many headlines. Uh, you see breaches and intrusions. You know, data being lost or stolen, um, and and again, we we see this across many many different industries as as well. Uh, this was one of the topics that really jumped out at the uh, best practices for chem community when we were doing our research roundtables over over the summer. Uh, and we see that there's sort of two kinds of companies, right? Those that have been hacked and those that don't know they've been hacked. So that you know, the question is, you know, how how can the how can the private sector develop solutions to prevent theft? You know, prevent restricted access and 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 help ensure and integrity and 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 do you i mean do you really see this as a as a real threat or is this something that you are faced with as well yes so um this is a uh, a topic that shows how quickly the world can change uh, moved into the cio role in 2007 
uh, cybersecurity was something that CIOs thought about. Um, but frankly, I will say at least for me, it was more of a back of mind issue. You know, you had to you had to do the basic blocking and tackling of putting the malware on your on your PCs, and you know, you had to protect yourself from the uh, uh, the teenage kid in a in the bedroom with the social problem. Uh, it was it was a very it was it was a threat, but it wasn't it wasn't at crisis type levels. In the time that I've been in this job, it has completely transformed to the point that now cybersecurity is a board level issue. Uh, I go to more of the Eastman board meetings than I don't to talk about what are we doing to protect Eastman's information, Eastman's intellectual property, because rightly so, our intellectual property is what defines who we are and how we're going to compete in the marketplace. Do I view this as a uh, a very real threat? Absolutely, it is uh, it is a front of mind issue for me and for for Eastman. You know, I think it's we've really transformed over the past I will say over the past five years from primarily a prevention mindset to equally weighted prevent, detect, and respond. Because I think the way you started this was it's not a question of if you will be infiltrated, it's when. And the way you respond is you got to detect it quickly and you have to respond appropriately. So we have tremendous amounts of energy and investment and talent going into making sure that we do the right things to prevent, but when we're not able to prevent it, we detect it quickly and we respond aggressively. And uh, we uh, we spend a lot of, lot of energy on that very topic. Um, one of the things that we do is one of the primary defenses we have is making sure we have smart users, that our employees and the people that come onto our network do so intelligently. And uh, we, like a lot of other companies, that have, have started a process of what we call ethical phishing, uh, which means it's, it's kind of a, an ominous-looking uh, email that tries to get someone to click something that, frankly, they shouldn't be clicking on. And when they do, they're routed to, uh, to get the appropriate training of what they should have seen and we think we that has been very effective at improving the awareness of our user community that this is not something that the IT department is uh, uh, firing wolf over, but this is a very real threat to who we are as a company. So it is um, it is a primary focus for me, without a doubt. Yeah, and, and again, it's really interesting. You know, SAP plays such an interesting role here where <clears> – <throat> you know we've we've enabled these this concept of a single global instance uh and and so the concept of security has really changed you know with within within the firewall as well and we're really starting to move toward more object based security profiles and things where you can actually classify data as as confidential and top secret and and it's a very different approach you know and and it, and it really changes yeah can change the entire landscape. Yeah, I think I think the days are gone where you can you can provide you can provide the same level of security to everything. You have to know where your crown jewels are and provide a different level of security for those crown jewels than you do for things that frankly are important but less important than define who you are as a company and your competitive um that, that risk your competitive position. Right. Right, and we're and we're again we're really moving beyond just this concept of role based security. So it's a it's it's a very changing landscape. So I I just have uh, one final question. Go ahead. Yeah, let, let me let me just add one thing, and I'll do it really really quickly. I know we're about out of time, but you know there is definitely a connect into this idea of, of big data, right? I mean, if you look at the activity on our networks today, it generates terabytes of information, and We've got a group that we've got to figure out how to find that needle in a thousand haystacks. And uh, big data and analytical techniques, we believe, can can help us be safer. Yeah, absolutely. So, so given uh, given the time, I know there are a few closing comments. Uh, so, first, Keith, I really, really want to thank you, you know, for joining us and for giving us your thought leadership. We're really looking forward to the uh, to the conference. Just four short weeks away. Uh, so, Tom, I'm going to turn it back over to you. I think um, you had a few closing comments, and then uh, maybe yeah. I had some closing comments. 
Yeah, thanks Thanks for that, Ray. And I want to ask everybody on the, the line with us to bear with us and hang on just a couple of more quick minutes because we do have some uh, very important details to share and perhaps uh, might have some time to jump into a couple of questions that have been submitted. Uh, so uh, firstly, I really want to thank Keith, uh, Keith Sturgill for, for sharing his thought leadership with us here today, uh, especially as he's uh, feeling a bit under the weather. Keith, we couldn't tell at all. Uh, a massive, massive thank you for, for, for sharing your experience expertise and your experience here with us today. Uh, I also want to extend a massive thanks for uh, Ray Adams from SAP uh, moderating today's discussion. You both did a, a terrific job, and we can't wait to see uh, both of you uh, on the keynote stage at the Best Practices for Chemicals Conference, like Ray said, coming up here in just four more quick weeks. Uh, and of course, uh, Keith is one of seven amazing uh, executives and industry experts that are going to be taking the keynote stage at the conference, uh, supplemented by over 35 more uh, peer-delivered best practices presentations from all across the value chain. Really, this is a can't-miss conference for the industry to go to. Uh, we want everybody on the call uh, in today's webcast to, to hopefully join us in Houston for the conference. Uh, if you're interested in learning more, the URL is on your screen right now, www.bestpracticeconferences.com, stroke chemicals, or please feel free to call our team at 914-509-5354. Uh, here at the Eventful Group, we'd be thrilled to help get you and your teams involved. We still have uh, some very, very discounted pricing uh, available for anybody that's taking part in today's webcast that would like to uh, now attend the conference. Please do get in touch with us. Uh, and of course, as uh, the Best Practices for Chemicals Conference is a collaborative effort between the Eventful Group, SAP, and ASUG, uh, I do now want to introduce ASUG's Chemical Group Leader, Paige Regan, uh, to share just a couple of brief moments with, with all of us on the call on some exciting updates in the world of ASUG. Paige, over to you. Thank you so much, Tom, and Keith, thanks so much for your thought leadership and time. We're very much looking forward to hearing your keynote at the Best Practices for Chemicals event. As Tom mentioned, my name is Paige Regan. I'm a community Communities Coordinator here at ASUG, um, and I, I do oversee the chemicals community, and I just wanted to take a few moments to share some updates with you. Um, so first off, I'm excited to announce that ASUG is celebrating 25 years of disruption, and we're very much looking forward to celebrating 25 more. Um, thank you to all of our 100,000 members representing 30 chapters across the U.S., Canada, along with over 100 special interest groups. Um, ASUC has been able to connect our communities through these complimentary face-to-face -face events and help nurture thought leadership. Many of our special interest groups host webinars throughout the year focusing on current trends and relevant hot topics. Uh, currently, um, some exciting news, there's a 16-part webcast series centered around digital transformation. This series is open to both members and non-members, hosted by SAP analysts, partners, and user groups. I highly encourage you all to register on ASUG.com for the series along with the other hundreds of events offered throughout the year. Um, so we very much look forward to seeing everyone at the upcoming Chemicals Conference in Texas, and we will be there at the booth on the showroom floor. So I would ask that you pop in, say hello, introduce yourself, and um, let me know what you're looking to see and hear from the chemicals community um, throughout the coming year. So, Tom, back to you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Paige. And again, a massive thank you on behalf of the entire uh, conference community, the ASUG communities, uh, the SAP chemical communities, uh, everyone's time in taking part in today's session. Uh, and uh, of course, on behalf of all those communities, we would like to thank uh, both Keith Sturgill and Ray Adams again uh, for doing such a great job and, and uh, diving a little bit deeper into some of the most critical challenges facing the industry here today. Uh, we did receive a few questions on the, the sidebar. Uh, unfortunately, as time would have it, uh, we are out of time, so we will be uh, able to, of course, answer those questions at the conference where Keith and Ray will both be on the keynote stage. Uh, we, of course, would, would love to have everyone there. We did also have 
uh, a logistical question regarding uh, the webinar being recorded. Yes, the webcast is being recorded here today uh, and will be made available to, to all those that uh, attended today's webinar. So please keep your eye on your inbox for uh, the recorded webcast that will be forthcoming. Uh, and again, we look forward to seeing everyone at the Best Practices for Chemical Conference uh, this upcoming March 14th through 16th at the Woodlands Marriott in the Woodlands, Texas, just outside of Houston. Uh, information on your screen right now. Uh, and again, uh, a big thank you to, to both Keith Sturgill and Ray Adams for, for taking part today and, uh, and putting together such a phenomenal webcast. Thank you, uh, thank you everyone, and wishing everyone a great conclusion of your week. We look forward to seeing you in Houston. Take care now. Bye-bye.